Hello everybody, welcome back to Back Out of the Case, this is the Sky Flight 44, aka Zek44, and today we play Donkey Kong Land. Now I'm gonna give you a little story. 2014, early 2014, I played Donkey Kong Land. At the very end of it, I said I was going to play Donkey Kong Land 2 eventually. Well, I started playing Donkey Kong Land 2, kind of randomly after I uh, found some good maps for it. And, well, I started playing it, I started looking at it, looking at these maps, trying to memorize the level design, trying to get everything. And then it hit me. Why don't I go the extra mile? And... Get everything, get all the conglas, get all the bonuses, get all the DK coins. Get as many warp points as I could possibly find. And do it without getting hit. Now, that was actually pretty fun. By the first session, I decided, what the hell, let's go back and do Donkey Kong Land. Let's go and do Donkey Kong Land 3 as well. And within about a week, a week and a half at the most, I pretty much covered the entire, all three games. Like, well over 30 hours of, um, fun for me anyway, trying to do this. And now we're going to be going through all three of the games. <laughs> and, well... It's it's going to be one hell of a ride. Now, originally I was going to be doing this with three other friends, one friend for each game. However, I went MIA for about two and a half weeks, and, well, I guess I kind of had to cancel that, because I, I don't want to interfere with their lives too much, and, well, I don't think I'm going to be able to contact at least one of them for a good long time. But, um... Oh wow, well. that, that, that would have been a fun little experiment. But if you remember what I said in Donkey Kong Land, my initial Donkey Kong Land playthrough, you can probably at least guess that this is one of my favorite platforming series. If not, my favorite platforming series. Now, the entire Donkey Kong Country series, which does include, as you would expect, the, uh, you know, Returns, Tropical Freeze, and the Donkey Kong Land sub-series. All of them generally have... I, I consider them precision platformers. All of them are precision platformers. They don't... They're not those speedy momentum-based platformers like Sonic the Hedgehog. They're not the reckless platformers like... Um, Super Mario. It's not some kind of simple platformer like Kirby's Dream Land. This is a precision platformer. You have to, well, be precise in your movements and controls to get through the game. This is actually, you know, I, I, I really do love the gameplay. The Donkey Kong Country series, I would some of the things I would actually go and um, I associate with the Donkey Kong Country series is good music, difficult platforming, and, well, great control. Also good water levels. But Donkey Kong Land, whether it's as good as a Donkey Kong Country game, that may be... That's kind of hard to, uh... I, I can't agree with it. Donkey Kong Land? I used to love my first foray into the Donkey Kong Country series. It's... I'm not gonna say subpar as much as it has its problems that instead of making it a great game, only makes it a good game. Now, Donkey Kong Lands 2 and 3, I do consider to be as good, or at least within the same ballpark, as the entire Donkey Kong Country series. More so towards Donkey Kong Country 1 and 3, 
And not necessarily Donkey Kong Country 2, because that game's a fucking masterpiece. But, uh... Donkey Kong Land 1... is to Donkey Kong Land 2. As Donkey Kong Country Returns is to Donkey Kong Country 2. They're still good games, but compared to the other, they're more subpar. They're a good game to an awesome game. And, well, Donkey Kong Land 2 and 3 beat this game out of the park. If there's anything that this game still has, it's, it has originality. It has a great soundtrack. An amazing soundtrack. My favorite Donkey Kong Land soundtrack. By far. However, it also has problems. The two big problems I can think of, there are more problems, but there are two big actual um, problems I can think of. Aren't these more superfluous problems I have with Donkey Kong Land 2 and Donkey Kong Land 3. They're a bit more major. The first one is screen lock. You're going to notice screen lock, you know, quite clearly in this game. What's so bad about it? The screen locks and, well, if you get off of the screen, you die, and that sucks, because there's many points in which you're going to know something is right beneath you, and you're going to want to roll or jump down into it, like a bonus barrel, like an actual uh, warp point, however, you're not going to be able to do that, unless you go on the specific path the game wants you to do. Else, you're going to die, even though you very well know you shouldn't have died. There is something down there. And that... that completely sucks. However, Donkey Kong lands two and three fixes. You know, each subsequent sequel, making, you know, you know, fixing it even further. Donkey Kong Land 2 does not have screen locking. However, you can still die that way by basically going, you know, actually going too fast for the screen to keep up. Like you fall too far too fast and the Game Boy can't scroll down fast enough. You'll die if you go off the screen that way. Donkey Kong Land 3, I've never had so far in my entire playthrough and I still did put in like you know a good 12 13 hours into that playthrough I never actually died that way when I was playing Donkey Kong, um, Donkey Kong Land 3 the entire screen uh, you know the screen scrolling killing you was not a problem in the game and I think it was fixed now the Game Boy Color version that the uh, that Japan got Supposedly, it's the one that fixed it, but the I've never had that problem in the Game Boy uh, game, so I it may or may not still be a problem. But they did better than Donkey Kong Land 2, at least. Now, the other actual problem I have with this game uh, is pretty much the momentum. Now, I I'm going to... The Sonic the Hedgehog series, and if you look into the fandom and hear anything about the in the fandom, one of the things you're going to hear is the physics aren't as good as Sonic 1 through 3. Well, 1 through 3 and Knuckles. And the closest games that, uh, you know, got to the physics in the, in the originals, in the classics, was Sonic Pocket Adventure and Sonic Advance. When I say this, I'm repeating what what I hear of that fandom. I cannot attest to any of this. Mainly because in a lot of... In a, when it comes to being able to differentiate minor, you know, minor physics changes and control changes in an actual series, unless it's blatant, 
I really can't go and... What was the word? I'm oblivious. I can't tell you what it is. I can't explain it. But... If I were to go and um, compare it to the Donkey Kong Country series... Donkey Kong Lands 2 and 3 feel and act like a Donkey Kong Country game. If you actually go and play them, they feel, they've, you know, pretty much emulated the physics and everything of a Donkey Kong Country game. Donkey Kong Land, like all of those bad or, well, underrated or just underperforming, I, I really should say, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog games, you know, fucks up a little bit. The momentum's where this game really kind of fucks up. When you're rolling, especially. Now, what do I mean by this? When you're rolling, you should be able to go and keep the momentum, jumping out of it. Well, it depends on when you jump out of it. But, um, when you're actually jumping out of a roll, and when you're actually rolling as well, you should be able to keep your momentum. This is something that all the Donkey Kong Country games did really well. Donkey Kong Lands 2 and 3 also did this really well. However, this game has the problem where sometimes your moment you lose all momentum or you, you you'll lose quite a bit of momentum. Now, because of the level design, I don't think it's too much of a problem, but the feel of controlling the Kongs does definitely feel like it's changed. Not to mention, I also feel as if the game itself is sluggish, as if, you know, the Kongs aren't moving fast enough. And the reason why I, I feel this way is because when I was recording, like I said before, I did Donkey Kong Country 2, I mean Donkey Kong Land 2, before I did this game. I did it right after I finished Donkey Kong Land 2, and it felt weird. It really felt weird. Uh, oh well, it, it's... It's different, it's worse, but it doesn't break the game. Outside of the problems, there's actually quite a lot of good things about this game. The soundtrack's amazing. There's actually quite a lot of good um, level design in some of these levels. There's some originality. They didn't do what Donkey Kong Land's, you know, 2 and 3 did, in which they took the uh, level themes and the music. Well, they made rem 8-bit remixes of the music and uh, Donkey Kong Country uh, 3, uh, 2 and 3. But um, this one did a lot more original stuff. And I think it really does help make this game better than... Uh, well, I'm not better, but it really does help distinguish this from Donkey Kong Lands 2 and 3. Now... To be actually, to be honest, if um, if this game didn't have the original content in the Kick-Ass soundtrack, I probably wouldn't say go and play Donkey Kong Land. I'd say go play two and three. Because well, one would not have anything good to really you know, distinguish it uh, from. Well. I really shouldn't say distinguish as much as make it worth playing when you have two other games that are better. But, uh, and it's not one of those, uh, it, Donkey Kong Land 1, 2, and 3, you really can't say are like, uh, Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3 when there's a preference. DK Land is worse than 2 and 3, no doubt about it. You, you can have a prefer you can have your preference between Donkey Kong Land 2 or 3 but one's worse Donkey Kong Country 1 uh, 2 and 3 
are definitely uh, more preferential. Some people like Donkey Kong Country. A lot more like Donkey Kong Country 2 more. And, well, there are few that like Donkey Kong Country 3 more than the others. Well, I'm not gonna, you know, say that's bad. I just think 2 is better. <laughs> but, uh, oh well. Now, uh, well, one other thing I, I wanna say before I actually get to the, you know, before the end of the video is that this game basically goes off of a 3-2-2. Two, two, um, basically, world, uh... Now, not layout, what's the... It's composed of three 2-2 two, two levels, in which each and every single world has three levels for one theme, the main theme, and then two levels for another theme, and two for another. Except for the first, which actually has a couple more levels. It has, instead of the um, normal eight, including the boss stage, of course, it actually has ten, in which it has four, three, two. Uh, four for the jungle levels, three for the snow levels, and uh, two for the ship levels. Now, to be honest, the jungle levels aren't all that much. I, I don't really care too much for them. You know, they're perfectly fine levels, it's just... I, I don't find too much good about them, like too much I want to play these levels again. The uh, snow levels, if they... are actually pretty good, probably my favorite uh, level theme in the original uh, world, the first world. The ship, uh, the ship actual levels are much harder, and def definitely much higher on the, um, my first real skill gates in the game when I was playing as a child, especially the second one. Oh, that level took me quite a while to actually be. Though well, it's not as bad as some of the other skill gates in the actual game, but oh well. See you in the next level, everybody.